Welcome to lesson on graphing rational functions. Uh, in this case, it'll be a slightly more complicated version of what we did before. So we will investigate the domain and the vertical asymptotes of uh, more complicated rational functions. And they still will have something to this effect, guys. Okay, um, Not everything, but some of them will have expression like that. Let's examine this simple version first. If y is equal to 1 divided by x over x minus 2 plus 1, and we could easily see that hk is 2, 1, and if we do a quick graphing, that's what that should look like, right? 2, 1, so that right there is the uh, new point of reference. And A being positive, 1, uh, it will give the standard shape right there, right? Now, when you look at that, right, uh, you could see that there's a vertical asymptote uh, when x equal to h. But in this particular case, it is a 2. And as x approaches 2, it's a plus sign right there, guys. It, we generally read that as x, x approaches 2 from the right f of x goes to positive infinity, it goes up, right? And if it comes from the left, the f of x comes down, right? Uh, so we want to study the behavior of how x, f of x behaves as the x approaches uh, the vertical asymptote either from the right or the left, okay? All right, here are some examples. So well, we're going to be dealing with like four different type of shapes here, okay? The very first one, without even graphing it, um, looking at that, the, one of the major rules of math is that thou shall not divide by zero. I mean, you never ever divide by zero, at least in high school. So what for what value of x would the denominator be equal to zero? That's x equal to one. Right, so x could be anything it wants to be except one. Right, so here's a set notation. So the possible vertical asymptote is in fact that, and the word here is possible, and you'll see why in a little bit. Okay, now if you look at the second one, once again, the denominator cannot be zero, so x can't be negative one. So x, so the domain is x is a set of x such that. Uh, x is all real number, except x can't be negative 1, and my possible vertical asymptote is x is equal to negative 1. And the third one is uh, x is all real numbers, except x can't be 1 or negative 1, and possible vertical asymptote, x equal to 1 or x is negative 1. And the last one is slightly more difficult to look at, so what we're going to do is going to factor them, and we notice that x minus 3 are the same, so we could cross cancel. But uh, after we cross cancel, we have to make a note that x can't be 3 because if you plug 3 into the original fraction, it'll give you 0 divided by 0, which is undefined, right? So what is your domain? Well, looking at the, this equation, we obviously could tell that x can't be negative 2 but we also mentioned that x can't be 3 either, okay? So here's the really important question. What are the possible vertical asymptote? x is negative 2. It's possible that x, can, x could be 3 here, the vertical asymptote, but I left it out intentionally, okay? You probably should add this, x equal to 3 here, uh, as a possible vertical asymptote, okay? And this is a major hint. Okay, let's, uh, as the question part B suggests, let's put that in a graphing calculator. Um, you should put it in a graphing calculator, uh, TI-84, 84, 84 plus, or any variation of such. I just did it in the uh, Desmos, okay? Uh, when I plugged in the first one, that's the shape that it got. So there was one vertical asymptote, as we s sort of expected, so that's good. When I put in the second one, it had kind of weird shape, but you could I could vi uh, visually see that when x was negative one, this graph was not going to touch that, 
so it's a third class in total. So I'm happy about that one. When I put in the third one, there are two of them, x equal to 1 and x minus 1. So there are no surprises so far. But when I put in the fourth one, let's jump to the uh, TI-84. When you're here, uh, this is the shape we got. So once you trace it, you could actually go plug back and forth like this. And it's kind of long, so, you know, let's say type in negative 2 and enter, you could see that there's nothing here. Why? There's no value value, right? So when x is negative 2, the value doesn't exist. But we cross cancel x minus 3. And I said it can't be 3, but if you look at 3 over here, it seems to exist, right? Uh, scrolling takes a long time, so I'm going to just type it in. 3, enter, boom. See that? There's nothing there. So in other words, there's actually a hole here that we don't see, right? And you ask yourself, why is that? Well, the hole, the, the point in space is dimensionless. So you actually can't see it. Let's go back to the graph that I created, okay? Here, I did create a zero using Desmos, right? To indicate that there is a hole here, okay? Uh, so any time, so, so take away from this, the big takeaway, when you cross cancel, you can't have that value, right? So we call it a hole. Here we go. On the fourth graph, there's a hole at x equal to 3. So that is the unexpected result. Everything else, as long as the denominator is equal to 0, it's a vertical asymptote. But when you cross cancel them, it's a hole. Okay, so this that is a huge takeaway for this lesson. Moving on, um, let's look at this particular example. That's the first one, right? Um, so we already see the picture, what it, what it is, but let's do it analytically. Okay, so assume that we don't have a calculator. Let's get back to the, uh, the next slide. So what I want you to do is. What happens as x approaches from the right? When I say that, I'm talking about the vertical asymptote, right? What is the right of that? Well, that's one-tenth away, a hundredth away, and thousandth away, right? And let's do the same thing from the left. So to be coming from the left, you want to subtract, right? So that gives you 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. Do me a huge favor, guys. Put it in a calculator and fill in the blanks. Okay, I'm going to assume that you paused the video and did that already. And if you did, these are the values that you should get. Have you noticed that as you get closer and closer to 1 from the right-hand side, the value goes, went from 41, 401, 4001, and apparently it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you're coming from the left, it's almost 40. Uh, this is almost 40. This is almost negative 40, right? Uh, negative 39, negative 399, and negative 3. 1,999. Seems to be getting bigger and bigger by negative value, right? That's exactly it. Okay. And that's supported by the previous uh, graph that we've seen, right? So here you could just say one plus one millionth or as big as, as small as you like it. We plug it in and on this side, maybe one minus a millionth. The value you're going to get is like huge. I believe that's a 4 million and 1. And this one's a tiny bit shy of uh, 4 million, I think. Yeah. I think this is correct. I mean, there might be a tiny mistake, but uh, why don't you double check? But the po big point is, is that as you get closer and closer to 1, this gets really big. As you get closer and closer to 1 from the negative side, it gets very big, but it's negative big, right? So how do you write that down? Well, if you approach one from positive versus as x approaches one from the negative side, from the left-hand side, is that when you approach from the right-hand side, it's positive infinity. The value gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And from the left-hand side, it's negative infinity, okay? You literally have to plug in few values. Okay, there is a way to do it, but I won't talk about that. Um, but I think this is the best way to do it at this level for now. Okay, how about this? Um, 
we are pro we're trying to s see what happens when x approaches negative one right so from the right hand side when you come from this side it's actually negative 0 0.9 i think yeah so negative 0 0.9 negative 0 0.99 negative 0 0.999 so it gets a little confusing uh, when you have negative value. So just try a tiny little number line. It makes things a little easier. When you're coming from the left, it's here. That looks like it's going to be about negative 1.1, negative 1.01, and negative 1.001. Okay. Pause the video and plug in the values and see what you get. Okay, guys. Uh, I assume that you already did it. And that, those are the values that I got. I, I don't know if you could see in the video, but that's a period over here, period right there, and period right here. And for this one, period right there, period and period. Sorry, I should have made that a little bigger. And I'm not going to put extra value underneath, but as it comes from the right-hand side, it seems to be going one. Negative infinity? Right. As it comes from the left, it seems to be going up in the positive direction, therefore positive infinity all right so what i want you to do for e and f we're going to do that in class right so don't do them but if you want to do them uh don't uh, wait for me because in fact if for those two there are two vertical asymptotes so the first three is for one of them the second three is for the other okay guys all right so please be patient and we'll do this together in class Let's take a look at this, okay? Um, what is the relationship between the... Uh, we'll talk more about it later, but for now, just copy it down. Uh, if the degree of the numerator, the P of X is the numerator, um, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, uh, the equation of the horizontal asymptote is Y equal to zero. For example, uh, if F of X equals X minus one divided by X squared, or this is X minus one divided by X squared minus two, so if the denominator has a higher degree of polynomial, then that's the degree. That's the equation for the horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the numerator and the denominator are equal to each other, then it's y equal to a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of the numerator and b is the leading coefficient of the, you got that right, denominator. So for f, uh, the the horizontal asymptote equation will be 1 over 3. See that? And then for g of x will be 3 over 1. The third possibility is the uh, degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, right? There would be no horizontal asymptote. I believe it was the third one, uh, third example, I believe. Let's, let's go back really fast. Yeah, it was a second one that has slant asymptote right here, guys, right? If you expanded out the top, that would have been x squared. The denominator is x to the first, right? And let's come back to where we were. There you go. What this says is that if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, the function's graph approaches a slant, slanted line called a slant asymptote. So that's what that was, guys. So in this case right there, x cubed, blah, 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 divided by x squared, the numerator is one higher, you will have a slant asymptote. And then this one is x squared minus one divided by x minus one, you will have a slant asymptote. We have that funny little picture that you've seen before, right? So we'll do more of that as we go along, but for now, just copy this down and commit this to memory, okay? He says, sketch the given rational expression, uh, rational function, find the graph's horizontal or slant asymptote, state the function's domain and range of the in interval notation in this case, right? Well, whenever we see this picture like that, we have done a long division, right? That's always a good idea. So let's do that. And that is equal to this, right? That is a quotient plus the remainder divided by a divisor. And if you change it around a little bit to the form that we are familiar with, it's three times one over x minus two plus one. So what's my hk? If you said two, one, you're correct. And then we need to sort of move on, right? What's my a? It's a three, it's positive, which means that graph should look something like that. That's like a really rough sketch, right? And then 
absolute value of a is 3, which is bigger than 1, so it's a vertical stretch. So this is the uh, base uh, table that I want to work from, or work with. And because a is 3 right here, we multiply 3 to this values, and you should get these values right there. Okay, so that will help us sort of like find the values. Um, I mean, plug in the, the, uh, the points, right? So when you draw in the graph, I need to denote the hk. So x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. And this right here, right, the intersection hk, 2, 1, is what I like to call NPR, uh, new point of reference, right? And then once you've done that, we like to plug in this value for x is 1 fourth, and then y will be 12, and so on and so forth. And that's the points we get. Uh, I believe 1 fourth, 12 is so high that I didn't bother plugging it in. And same thing here. To get this lower left hand corner, all you gotta do is uh, plug in for negative x is over here and negate this values as well. And then we connect them, and there you go. Um, we still need to answer the domain and range, right? So what's my domain? Uh, it's all from negative infinity to 2 or 2 to infinity. The range is obviously everything except the horizontal asymptote. So go from negative infinity to 1 or 1 to positive infinity. Um, the book didn't ask you questions about this, but if it asked you, uh, if x uh, approaches... Uh, in this case, 2 from the right-hand side, y goes to positive infinity, right? Because it's going up. If the x value is approaching 2 from the left-hand side, y value is going down, so that'll be negative infinity, okay? I think that concludes the, today's lessons. Yeah, I uh, will do the part B tomorrow. So we'll talk more about it, okay, guys? All right, have a good night.